Hi guys, and welcome to a new video. Today we are coding Atari Breakout using JavaScript. The goal for this first part is going to be as follows. First we need to add a game area. It's going to be a 1100 per 550 pixel black rectangle. Here we add a new object that creates and sets the characteristics of our game area. Canvas is the HTML component used for drawing. In the start function we are going to set canvas properties, draw shapes and perform main actions of the game. First we set canvas height and width. Now we are going to style the canvas by adding a black background color. A 6 pixels grey solid border. And now we are going to center the canvas in the middle of the page. Now we insert the canvas in the body section of the HTML page. Now we call start function, in order to see our game area coming to life. Sorry I misspelled height. This is our game area. Let's add a bold to it, which is a filled circle with a radius of 15 pixels. But first, let's add the property context, which we are going to use to draw and color shapes within our game area. And now we are going to add the ball object. First we define the ball's location in the canvas. Then define the speed with which the ball is going to move. Add draw function, in which we are going to add drawing instructions. First we specify the length of our drawing line. Then a filling color for the ball. Also a color, for the drawing line. Before drawing a circle, we need to start a new path. Then create a circle using arc function, in which we define the center's location, the radius which is equal to 15, a starting and an ending angle. We chose 2 times pi, because we want a full circle. Now we draw the circle using stroke function. We fill it with color using fill function. And finally we close the path. Now what we have to do is call ball draw in the start function of game area. To make the ball move we need to define a horizontal and vertical speed that we are going to use to change the ball's position over time. For this we are going to add a new method to the object ball, that's going to update the ball's position. Before drawing the ball in the new position, we need to clear the previous, in order to give the illusion of an animation. For this, we use the function clear rec to clear the rectangle around the ball.
we add a new function to the object game area that we are going to use to animate the ball. First we clear the ball, then update its position then redraw it. Now we are going to start a new animation using GameArea.Update. We are also going to call GameArea.Update inside itself, in order to keep changing the ball's position, and thus getting an animation. Of course, you shouldn't forget to call GameArea.Update for the first time. And here's the result. Now let's make the ball bounce against the game area borders. When the distance between the ball center and the border is equal or less than 15, the ball must bounce, which means DX and DY are going to change according to the border being hit by the ball, as shown in this illustration. In order to do this, we are heading to update function in the ball object, and we are going to add a condition on the ball's position. If the ball reaches the left or the right border, the horizontal speed, dx, is going to change, either from positive to negative or the other way around. If the ball reaches the upper or the bottom border, it's the vertical speed, dy, that is going to change. There you go. Now if we want it to disappear, when it reaches the bottom border, we just remove the condition greater than 535. Then we stop the animation, if the ball go beyond the bottom border. Now let's create a new object, that is going to add a player. Like the ball object we are going to define a location for the player, and a draw function. And like ball draw, we should call player draw in the start function of the object game area. In order to make the player move, we should first add a clear function to clear the player in the current position. Then add a move function that is going to update the player's position, according to the value of argument, d, passed to the function. We should also limit the player's move, because we don't want it to go beyond the left or the right border. We are going to add another function outside the object player, that is going to define the value, according to the arrow key that is being held down. If the left key is down, the player's x position is going to decrease by 15. If the right key is down, the player's position is going to increase. Finally, to be able to move the player, we are going to add an event listener in game area start, that's going to listen to the event key down, and call the function move player, if the event occurs. There you go. Now let's make the ball bounce against the player. The position of the ball's center should be between player x and player x plus its width and it should be above the player with a distance that's equal or less than 15.
In ball update we are going to add another condition on the ball center position in order to change the ball speed if it hits the player. There you go. If the ball bounces against the player's edges, it's a different story. The ball's move won't be the same as if it hits the middle of the player. The ball reaches the player's edge if the distance between the ball's center and the player's edge is less than 15. The top of the player and the bottom of the ball should also overlap. Ok guys that's all for this video, see you in the next part, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, like if you care, ha.